Hey everyone and welcome to another week's episode of my Disney photo editing series. This week we're going to be talking about multiple exposure blending. I'm going to show you guys how I go about blending my multiple exposure brackets. I'm not going to be using any software such as Photomatix or any other HDR software. I'm going to be doing everything in Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, and in fact, as long as you have Photoshop, you can do this with your photos as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started with this photo of Cinderella Castle that I selected. And as you can see, I have five different exposures. And I'm going to go actually to my longest exposure, which was a 30 second exposure. And I'm going to start editing this, which is going to be kind of the basis for my blend. And you'll notice the castle is basically completely blown out. But I'm not worried about that because I'm going to use two other images to fix that. I am using this image actually to work as the base for all the darker areas. So this is going to be more concerned with the shadow areas than the highlights. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go ahead and change my white balance. It's a little warm for my taste. So I'm just going to pull down the slider a bit until I get something that I like. And... right there that looks good and we'll leave the tent alone and now I'm gonna bump the exposure even further uh, maybe about 0.5 will be good there leave the contrast alone but we are gonna pull back the highlights a little bit uh, I'm not too concerned with the castle but I, I want to make it so it's not too crazy so then when we go to do the fix that it blends and looks realistic We'll go ahead and bump the shadows as well. And we'll just do 55 as well there. I'm not going to touch any of these other sliders, but I am going to come down here and enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. So now we'll go through and we'll select uh, another image that we're going to edit to use in our blend. I've actually gone ahead and selected the two that I'm going to use, so I'm going to use uh, my shortest exposure which was two seconds and then the next one in the bracket that was four seconds so I'll go ahead and actually let me get the white balance because I want to keep the white balance the same through all the photos so I'll go ahead and change that 2952 and I'm gonna bring the exposure on this particular one up quite a bit Right there is nice. Leave contrast alone. And again, we'll pull the highlights back. You can see we're really starting to get a nice look to the castle. Minus 50 is good. We'll bring up the shadows a little bit. You don't want this to be, you don't want it to look, be too far off from your base exposure because then it's going to make blending more difficult. Uh, but that's good there. And again, we'll enable profile correction, remove chromatic aberration. And we'll go to our next one. Go ahead and enable and remove. And we'll change the white balance again manually, 2952 to match. And I'm going to bring up the exposure again. Uh, we'll just do 0.5. Again, we're focusing mainly on the castle here because that's what we're going to be focusing in on is these highlights. We'll pull the highlights down again. Uh, not as much as the other one. Right there looks good. Minus 29. And we'll pull the shadows up a little bit. Right there is good. And so now we have our three images that we're going to blend into Photoshop. So I'll just select those three. Right click. Edit in Adobe Photoshop. All right, so now we've got all three images into Photoshop, and this is going to be our base image that we work off of. So we'll go ahead and copy the other two images over the top of this one. Get both of those, and I'm going to order them uh, from most exposed to least exposed, like that. And we'll just go ahead and shift click to select all three layers, and we're going to go ahead and choose auto align layers and auto. And hit OK. The reason I'm doing that is just if anything was off, this will make sure that everything's lined up just right. 
Um, sometimes you do have to do a little bit of manual adjustment, but this will get you really close. So let's hide the two underexposed layers. And now we've got our base or background layer. And we're going to go into our luminosity mask panel. And I'm going to choose the lights one luminosity mask. That's going to create a luminosity mask from uh, our midtones all the way to our brightest highlights. You see we've got a selection. So we'll come to our layer one. And while our selection is still made, we'll click the Create Mask icon. And we can unhide that layer now. And you'll see we've already got quite a bit of improvement on the castle. But it did have some negative effects, or at least I feel like they're negative effects down here. So what we can do is, so that we don't ruin the mask that we have, uh, I'm just showing you the mask. I don't want to paint over this and mess up the mask, so I'm going to group that single layer into a folder and then I'm going to create a mask on that and that gives me uh, kind of dual control to make an additional mask without affecting the first mask. So with this selected here I'm going to go ahead and take a big brush and paint black on the lower portion. I'm actually going to do it at 100% opacity and just kind of paint all that out. And you see now we get kind of the nice glow back on the bottom that we had lost. Let me do uh, kind of a before and after. See we lost some of that spark and then that brings it back right there. So now we're going to mask in our other layer that we had. So again we're going to come up here and with now the background layer and the layer we just blended visible we're going to select again the lights one uh, luminosity mask. <coughs> and it creates a selection and we'll come up to our other layer and we'll apply the mask and we'll go ahead and unhide that and then again you see we have the same problem here so we'll group that layer as well and create a mask for it and I'm just gonna paint away again at the bottom because that's the part I don't really want to mess with and probably right in there and there looks pretty good and now we have kind of our initial blend uh, one thing that I do want to do though is we still got a couple kind of bright spots we'll just come in here and fix those up even more by selecting the white brush and we'll do about a 20% opacity and I'm just gonna paint on the the last layer we masked just kind of clean up these areas that I still feel are a little bright It'll help bring them down just a little bit. It's really close, and you could probably even go without doing this, but I just feel like I want to make those just a little nicer, especially here on these edges where it seems to be really bright. We'll zoom out, and we've got quite a nice blend there. And the other thing that it really helped with is if you take a look at these lights, I'm going to put these two groups in its own group so we can compare. If you look at this light, this is after the blend, look before. It was kind of messy and uh, there was a very bad transition here and it was blown out here in the middle and even right there. And then by blending it, you see now we've got a nice blend. It, it goes from the nice orange lights to the kind of that hot white center in a more gradual way. And the lights here aren't as blown and harsh. I'll just flip back and forth again. Uh, so it actually helps out with stuff like that really really well all these little street lamps that are around Disney um, now one thing that can happen when you do this type of blending is this castle kinda came out a little flat where we were doing all the blending and transitioning so you can just go ahead and actually just create an S curve so we'll create a curves adjustment layer and a little curve there and you can apply it to the whole image if you think that looks all right. I'm actually going to invert it and then I'm going to go and I'm going to take my mask from the first blend that we did and I'm going to apply that. Let me just delete it and then reapply it. And then I will paint out again on the bottom. I'll group that, create a mask. and paint out here on the bottom using 
black. And that's pretty nice. So this gives me a, ba a base blend for me to work with. Uh, this is definitely not a finished image, but now I have everything from my shadows to my highlights looking really good. Nothing is under or overexposed. Um, and I can start doing my work such as my color balancing, um, adding contrast into the rest of the image, uh, my hue saturation, and working with some of my levels and some of the other areas besides the castle. Uh, I hope you found this particular tutorial interesting or informative. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those below. And we look forward to having you on our next episode. See you later.